When we consider multi-channel marketing, one of the biggest questions we get asked is how can it be measured? As traditional channels like out of home advance in their digital capabilities, evidence-based measurement is as important as the capabilities themselves. Recently, I was delighted to interview Andy Brown, ex-global CEO of Kantar, who is an authority on the area of multi-channel measurement. We discussed how the industry is performing in terms of measurement and the effect that channel silos are having on progression in the area. For the next 30 minutes or so, you'll hear a frank and informative conversation about challenges, opportunities, and how to take a holistic approach to measurement. Here's what he had to say. Andy, thanks very much for coming in. It's yeah, superb to have you on, sort of particularly with your wealth of knowledge, just in the whole measurement space. He, there's a number of topics that I think sort of want to cover, because uh, you know, we've been getting a number of sort of uh, points, and in an earlier podcast, for example, we had about sort of measurement really being a key issue here sort of for the industry, both for the advertisers and then also as well for people in the industry themselves. I wonder if we can start off with a topic that I've talked about sort of previously when we've done pause of play forecasts, and it has been sort of an interest to many parties, is this whole thing of trying to bring the silos together. That At the moment, what you have is that you have very much of a, a very siloed approach to media in terms of how it's bought, how it's viewed. You know, there's a TV slot, there's a, a outdoor slot, there's a digital slot and so forth. And as we're now getting platforms which are coming through like AVOD, digital out of home and so forth, the boundaries between what's typically been seen as analog and digital are breaking down and that's raising questions. I'd like to get your sort of take on things. And you've obviously done a lot of work with, with many parties on this. So any insights that you can really share into this, what you see? Sure. Seen? No, no, I think it's I think it's a good point you raise in. I think uh, if we look over the history of particularly industry audience measurement, mm -hmm. um, each of the media, as you say, were often quite siloed in the way that they went about measurement. Yeah. Um, so, for example, you know, even in some countries, you know, newspapers and magazines wanted their own separate surveys, even though okay. yeah. to a lot of consumers, it's it's all print. And yeah. Now, I mean, in the past, and God bless TGI, God bless GWI, and indeed IPA touch points, mm -hmm. those were the kind of data sets which provided that, uh, if you like, cross-media comparison or tried to look across uh, the different silos. Mm -hmm. um, and each of those studies, you know, as far as I'm aware, continues to thrive and, mm -hmm. and are still in regular use amongst most media owners and, and their agencies mm -hmm. and the media agencies. Um, but what I think we are seeing is perhaps the beginning of a, 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 a more detailed cross silo okay. audience measurement solution. And I think probably the best example you're seeing right now uh, is coming out of ISBAR, mm -hmm. um, which uh, is really representing advertisers' frustration mm -hmm. at the inability to be able to look at television and digital video on the same audience yep. platform. Um, and, you know, what is quite interesting, of course, is that, you know, video doesn't stop necessarily um, with television or digital online video. Mm -hmm. uh, even outdoor um, yep. also now has uh, digital video. I mean, uh, I could see value, particularly if outdoor wants to take ad dollars from um, TV or indeed digital mm -hmm. online. If if they want to take those ad dollars, then they need to stand up measurement uh, and put it in a context for advertisers as to why outdoor outdoor video represents good value. I think one of the things that we will see, um, I mean, there, there, have been, there are a number of sort of big trends going on in the mm. market. Um, one is first party data. Uh, mm. And what do I mean by first party data? I simply mean in the context of media, mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, you have to subscribe, uh, you have mm -hmm. to log in uh, mm -hmm. to a platform, whether that's your BBC iPlayer, whether you're talking about Netflix, whether you're talking about Disney Plus, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. What that provides the owners of those platforms with are a lot of very interesting metrics mm -hmm. about how how often, when, uh, what is being consumed. Mm -hmm. Doesn't always tell you who is consuming it mm -hmm. beyond the yeah. household level. And, and that's something we can perhaps talk about a bit more in the conversation. I think one of the other pieces around this is that Netflix have been very public in eschewing mm -hmm. uh, any form of syndicated or joint industry measurement mm -hmm. Uh, solutions. Mm -hmm. um, 
my belief is that if they want to sell advertising in particular, mm -hmm. um, they will need to start being able to demonstrate comparable metrics mm -hmm. uh, to the people that they're trying to take the advertising okay. from. Yeah, which makes perfect um, sense. Uh, I, I also believe fundamentally that even if they don't end up selling ads, the fact that their subscriber base is slowing mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. uh, or the growth is slowing down, uh, they need to be able to see what's happening over the garden wall, if you will. Yeah. So what's happening beyond that? Who am I losing my subscribers to? Mm -hmm. Where do I get them back? Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to understand that in the context of just mining your own first party data. You need something a little bit more holistic than mm -hmm. that. So I do, I do see Netflix uh, and others who have so far sat outside uh, the audience measurement solutions on video beginning to come in. And it's quite interesting when you look at the overall context of this discussing the discussion about measurement. Yeah, advertisers are clearly crying out for a common a common standard, but it almost seems as though many of the conversations that they're the least listened party to in, in some ways. If you hear, you know, we often hear about the fights between Nielsen and the, the owners of the set-top box data and the sort of shifting balance of power there. And yet, yeah, you know, the advertisers seem to be off to one side with a, what about us? So sort of actually, I mean, is that quite a fair comment or you think? I, I think it's, I think it's, it's, a, it's a, a suitably a provocative comment yeah. in. <laughs> um, and one that's, that, that my answer might <laughs> upset quite a lot of people in the industry. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think, I think there is a frustration there, as I alluded to before. Um, I think the, the advertisers feel as though through the, the ecosystem, they fund uh, most of the major uh, industry yeah. measurement platforms. And their frustration is not seeing these begin to come together in a way that gives them that holistic view. Mm -hmm. They think that they are offering a poor, uh, they, get, they get a poor service in the mm -hmm. sense that they can't get that holistic view. Mm -hmm. They also worry, quite frankly, that what they do to consumers mm -hmm. in terms of over uh, frequency. So their spending okay. is is also damaging their relationship with consumers. Right, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen that ad so many times now. Mm -hmm. Please, can you stop playing it? It's yeah. actually, you know, you actually end up with diminishing returns and a negative image on on that brand. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I think there's the uh, there's also the sort of the consumer piece in yeah. that, that that they're concerned about. Um, I think that you know, the fact that ISBAR, as part of the broader WFA mm -hmm. uh, global initiative around audience measurement, have come forward with Origin is a is a good step. And mm -hmm. I think at the moment, there's, you know, from what I can understand in the market, they're seeing good support from uh, the advertisers. So mm -hmm. obviously the advertisers themselves, they're seeing good support from the digital side mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, reasonably good support from the agency okay. community. But thus far... I think the television, the traditional television networks have, you know, have, there are still a number of bridges that need to be crossed before before they come into that that solution. Okay. And it, it feels as though just with, with TV, it feels as though certainly there is a, a fear factor there that any common measurement system will be used essentially for TV advertisement to be siphoned off into the online space. It would be wrong for me to to put words in their mouth yeah. like that. Uh, I think I think there is a there is a concern. But I think one of the interesting thing in, things in and we'll talk again we might talk about it a bit later yeah. in the conversation is that you know one of the things that will will come out of project origin at a certain point is uh origin will start to play out probabilized exposures to uh, digital video and television mm -hmm. on an individual basis. And what that will enable users to do is to look at basically cross media or cross screen mm -hmm. reach and frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, and they will be able to look at what were the exposures that were driving that potential overexposure, yeah. um, et cetera. The first thing that once the users have, have done their reach and frequency analysis mm -hmm. and knock themselves out doing that, the very next question they're going to come to is, how much should I invest in TV? How mm -hmm. much should I invest yep. in in digital video? And what is the value of an, these impressions, which mm -hmm. are all seem to be equal in the reach and frequency mm -hmm. calculation? I want to overlay weights on it. Mm -hmm. And one of the other 
things that I'm involved in is a thing called the Attention Council. Okay. The yeah. Attention Council is a not-for-profit uh, group who, and um, the goal is to try and drive the use of attention metrics mm -hmm. across media and marketing. Well, attention metrics based are one of the potential ways uh, that could become a lens to look at those uh, impressions that are coming out of that cross screen mm -hmm. measurement and to assign values or weights to that. And that's something that is so maybe we can talk about later. In the well, well, actually, I mean, it now sort of you, you, <laughs> you've actually led on to the next topic that I've actually got down here is really talking about sort of the attention economy and what, what's happening there. Because as you said, you know, new metrics are becoming very popular sort of in here and they're going to play a growing role moving forwards. I think I think the attention uh, attention is, is it, it's very interesting. I was on a mm -hmm. um, uh, a webinar yesterday, a sort of webinar slash group discussion mm -hmm. uh, with a number of agencies and networks and research vendors, mm -hmm. and yeah, you know, a couple of people turned around and said, "Well, we've been trying to measure attention for twenty years." Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes that attention is also described as engagement, mm -hmm. uh, and again, various different. Uh, measurement solutions have attempted to get to engagement, whether that's, you know, how much of a, uh, a particular program uh, on a, say, a, a television panel mm -hmm. people are watching, does that sh suggest higher engagement? Mm -hmm. uh, and then what's the impact going to be on the commercial break and the retention of yep. commercial messages? Uh, in the context of print, we used to ask questions about, you know, time spent mm -hmm. reading. Uh, dwell time in the context okay. of digital. Yep. So, so those have all been used as sort of surrogates to try and get to attention. Mm -hmm. I think what's changed in the last three years or so has been the widespread availability of, of embedded cameras mm -hmm. uh, in tablets, in cell phones. Uh, it mm -hmm. allows us now to look at whether the eyes are actually alighting okay. um, on the content. Now, it's not a simple... Uh, the, the the eye concept is very simple. Yeah, the actual practice of it is is broader than that because mm -hmm. you know we also need to we consume ads in different ways. We can can yep. consume ads without actually looking uh, at an ad through the audio yeah. low low involvement processing. So so but I do I do feel as though attention is is a very interesting way. And if you look at the work of the the started with with Dentsu mm -hmm. uh, in uh, driving this, but all the agency hold codes yeah. now are all investing uh, in attention-based systems to wait either within media. Mm -hmm. So these we prefer these impressions because they have a higher engagement okay. around that particular uh, content uh, than than these ones, mm -hmm. or across media. Mm -hmm. um, we might assign some media weights on the basis of that. The reason why they're doing it is because and. I would commend anybody who's interested in this to go to the Attention Council website. We have 50 case studies okay. uh, showing the ROI uh, of attention-based metrics in different solutions. Mm -hmm. And there is very clear evidence that it drives metrics at all levels uh, of the funnel from you know brand lift, awareness, right the way through to, to mm -hmm. sales. So it works. That's why, that's why people are using it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just agencies. We're also beginning to see um, the uh, the media vendors beginning to engage. Uh, a JC Deco podcast, mm -hmm. um, you know, outdoor uh, through the viewability uh, adjusted impact mm -hmm. system has actually used eye cameras in the uh, core currency mm -hmm. to net down from gross exposures or gross passages, as they used to be called, uh, down to net exposure. Mm -hmm. So I think I think the outdoor industry has been quite early adopters okay. uh, of the technology. I'm also aware of some projects that, uh, in particular, Deco have done that with neuroscience, going mm -hmm. back to the complexity mm -hmm. uh, of attention, yeah. as well as with work that they've done with folks like Lumen, um, looking at eye cameras and, and how people see different billboards, mm -hmm. whether they're digital or, or, or fixed. And when, when we look at this in terms of the, you know, the cookie-less future and in terms of the in, potential impact on, on you know, how that sort of feeds into the whole debate as well, are we having anything sort of any data yet, any sort of particular case studies that we can point to to see where the trends are, are particularly going? 
Well, I think I think there are two pieces around, particularly the digital uh, domain. One was one is cookies and the diminution of the cookie mm-hmm. or deprecation of the cookie. Uh, and the other piece uh, is also privacy on uh, particularly uh, virtual VPN mm-hmm. uh, that um, our friends at Apple okay. uh, have, have put onto the phones. Those are making measurement and tracking somewhat more difficult. Mm. I'm probably going to upset a lot of people in the digital world here mm-hmm. that the, a big industry grew up and there was a big story about accountability of mm. digital in a way that other media weren't as accountable. Um, big industry around attribution, mm. um, and cookies were a cookies actually drove quite a bit of that. Mm-hmm. I did a paper for the IPA F Works, um, which involved me researching amongst mm-hmm. vendors, buyers, advertisers, and the feedback that I got was certainly that cookies were were helpful, mm-hmm. uh, but there was this kind of myth that we could track, you know, each individual's path to purchase every little touch point they went through before mm-hmm. they then finally clicked buy or went out to the bricks and mortar store yeah. and bought the product. And, and I think it was a little bit of a myth. It was never quite as brilliant mm-hmm. as that. It was helpful. Um, I think two other th- two things will come out of this. I think one is that the, uh, we will see a, the rise of markets mi- mixed modeling again. So okay. higher level um, uh, economic modeling of the impacts Okay. Uh, of campaign because through necessity I think that will happen. Mm-hmm. I think the other side of it is that the engagement with attribution in digital has driven uh, a change in mindset of other media. Mm-hmm. So I think television, for example, um, I've done a little bit of work in this area with mm-hmm. with TV Squared. TV Squared told me that uh, so this so television attribution. Mm-hmm. So what I'm trying to say here is there's a shift from how many people actually saw the content or the ad Mm -hmm. to what did they do next? Just to be clear in terms of the definition in this context. So there's been this growth, uh, and I think there's been a shift in budgets, first of all, from pure head counting audience measurement Mm -hmm. to attribution. Um, I think you're seeing companies now like iSpot in the United States who are bridging the gap between audience measurement and attribution. attributions. Mm-hmm. Um, I think television vendors are now offering up packages, particularly with direct consumer brands, mm-hmm. very fast going category on TV, uh, where you get your audience metrics and your attribution. So links to your website traffic, links through store to store visitation, mm-hmm. etc., uh, coming through as but as part of a media bundle mm-hmm. that you buy from the, the television vendor. Yeah. Uh, I think they TV Squared told me that one of the major networks, their clients in the US, had trained 500 salespeople uh, okay. as to how to sell oh, okay. attribution. Yeah. So that so it's, it's quite deeply penetrated. It's more it's more in a developmental stage out mm-hmm. outside the US, but it's happening and it's happening quite fast. It's also happening in outdoor. Um, mm-hmm. Again, you know, one of the the interesting ones that that I've seen, which again was Deco, was a deal that Deco has with Tesco, Mm -hmm. with digital billboards outside Tesco stores where they post uh, ads Mm -hmm. and then track the in-store purchases Mm -hmm. um, as a result of those exposures. So, so again, outdoor has that capability. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not something that's just for, you know, big budget television. Uh, It's something that's available to, to other uh, media as well. Other parties as well. I mean, if you were looking at, let's say, you know, a TV company, out of home company, and you were thinking, okay, is there an opportunity here for me to actually take some of that digital money? What would be the steps that you would be doing from a measurement standpoint? I've talked previously about, you know, the three A's um, that would enable that. Yeah. You know, so the, you've got audience measurement, mm-hmm. cross screen. Attribution. So why can't we sell? Uh, why can't we offer the same kind of accountability in our medium for outdoor, let's say, mm-hmm. um, as digital uh, video? And the third piece is attention. You mm-hmm. know that sort of broader, deeper level of engagement. So I think mm-hmm. I think there are ways in which uh, people can, other media can capitalize on that mm-hmm. that digital piece. First of all, I want there's there's a head counting component. Yeah. So you know I'm offering whatever it is, unique reach, I'm offering scaled audience, mm-hmm. um, 
But in order to do that, you need cross cross platform metrics or you need cross sorry, you need cross silo metrics back yeah. to where we came in. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the audience piece of it. Okay. The second A was the attribution piece. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to demonstrate equivalent accountability mm -hmm. for my uh, media sale to you as the the advertiser. What's the impact? I can give you that. And then I think the third piece is I can demonstrate on perhaps a comparable basis mm -hmm. that we're generating greater levels of attention, mm -hmm. um, i.e. we're punching above our weight mm -hmm. uh, versus some of the other uh, digital okay. uh, opportunities. So that's what I was saying was my kind of three A's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's, it's the same for you know, what the platform should be doing. And I guess from an agency standpoint, sort of where their hole in the sort of where they are in the whole measurement debate and so forth. I mean, where, do, I guess, sort of this is a bit of a multifaceted question, but where do you see the agencies at the moment? And what do you think needs to change within the agencies? Because again, it can go back to this point before about the silos within the agencies and maybe things are still very much looking at the traditional way of doing things. I think, I think it's a really interesting point. Um, I think agencies have always expected to understand, and I think that been expected to be able to explain mm -hmm. uh, to advertisers, mm -hmm. how does this plan look holistically across the different okay. channels, as well as within the channel? Mm -hmm. And I think, to be fair, they've most of what they've done, uh, they've supported the industry mm -hmm. studies, but they've also built their own proprietary yep. uh, solutions, their own proprietary lens uh, on that. And I think that's that's a good thing. Uh, when I've worked with agency clients over the years, what we've always tried to do is to, is almost to create, there used to be a thing called my AOL, mm -hmm. which was my version of AOL. Yeah. But we used to, in many ways, with the measurements, the most successful measurement solutions, mm -hmm. offer a, a syndicated layer that's accepted, mm -hmm. but then provide a proprietary overlay that allows uh, mm -hmm. a particular whole code to put mm -hmm. their stamp on it or yeah. to give their approach to it. And I think those have always been the most successful uh, research solutions mm -hmm. that I've, I've personally uh, been involved with. On this point with the agency, something that came up in an earlier, sort of in another conversation was talking about actually, you know, we have now TV and out of home and digital video silos and so forth. Should it all just be one? Should it all just be one video? So well, stop. it's it's interesting. Um, I mean, I, obviously, I come at this from a measurement yeah. lens, uh, probably first and foremost. And yeah, you know, I joked about you know newspapers and magazines sometimes not wanting to be on the same measurement platform, yeah. and in certain countries they are separated. I think if you look at, I, I've neglected to mention the Dutch jigs. So the Dutch mm -hmm. have put a kind of a super jig together, okay. which is putting all of the siloed measurement into mm. a single JIC control platform. Now, um, it's still in its uh, infancy in terms of putting putting that together, but I but I think that um, is, a, is a very interesting mm -hmm. uh, innovation. But the I, I also am aware of joint industries, joint industry groups in certain countries where they want to control all video measurement, to your okay. point, Ian. Yeah. So they want television, they want digital video, and all under the auspices of a single measurement mm -hmm. uh, provider. Um, and then from a sales point of view, I mean, I'm not the expert in media no, media sales or, or media buying, but I think, you know, I think advertisers arguably do mm -hmm. see, they, they have a video budget mm -hmm. and their video budget um, gets, this historically television's become digital online plus television, yeah. now potentially could include outdoor and yeah, all the different other forms, you know, mm -hmm. advertiser funded uh, content, mm -hmm. et cetera. And, and it all sort of seems to come out of that audio visual um, mm -hmm. budget. So I think the idea that the measurement system provides insight across that, I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would leave it down to the media vendor or indeed the agency, you know, CEO to decide yeah. whether you put all of the um, resourcing it into that structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I guess, you know, there's always always what I like to do with these things is we're a call, call to action, as it were. You know, what can people do sort of within the industry when it comes to this particular topic? Because obviously at the moment, I mean, it's, yeah, it's probably the number one topic 
that people are talking about. So what can what can advertisers do from a practical level? In respect of measurement, um, I think they are more than doing it at the moment because they're more. Th they would argue that they are putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah. If you see the initiative with Origin, mm -hmm. um, I think that I think there's a degree of inertia sometimes mm -hmm. uh, in the way that that things are done. Um, I think there's an, they need to sometimes. This is going to sound. I'm going to sound terribly, terribly old fashioned <laughs> now. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Um, <laughs> but you know, we. I think there is an issue around standards yep. of measurement. Uh, I don't think necessarily users in the industry generically, not just advertisers, mm. ask enough questions about mm. the provenance of data. Where okay. did it come from? Um, what's, yes, it's a very large sample size because it's it's there's this whole debate about probabilistic and deterministic mm. data. I was talking yeah. to one of the agency heads um, a couple of uh, months ago and he was saying, I can't get people to use panel data in my okay. digital team hmm. because it's only 2,000 people mm. as opposed to 2 million people. Mm. And that's because you've got almost like these two schools of thinking mm -hmm. and sometimes it, it is creating silos even within silos. Yeah. <laughs> is, is this deterministic versus probabilistic mm -hmm. data piece? Uh, digital has a large amount of deterministic mm -hmm. data. The traditional media models are typically built off probabilistic solutions. They're built off panels yeah. or surveys, which then project the population. Mm -hmm. um, so I think my my plea would be to be open minded and see the benefits and the limitations of both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, determin large scale deterministic data absolutely has a place mm -hmm. and can provide granularity uh, and insight that you cannot get from a panel. Yeah. However. The panel also has unique capabilities, which is, you know, who, how many. Uh, and, and putting those two things together is really the, the skill and the mm -hmm. art uh, of media measurement, in my opinion. So I guess my, my call out would be, please be holistic in the way that you look at things. Okay. There isn't, it's not simply, you know, bigger numbers are not necessarily better than smaller numbers yeah. as, as it can, relates to sample size. Um, and to use the two things as indeed you'd use qualitative and quantitative research. Okay. Which all makes perfect sense. Andy, that's been absolutely superb. Thanks so much for your time. It's been great. Absolute pleasure. Um, thank you. Brilliant. Well, Andy, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to discuss this with you. In the next episode, I'll be venturing into territories unknown. Join me in my next episode, Introduction to the Metaverse. I'll be discussing what my research has uncovered so far about this new world, what it could mean for advertisers, and what the latest chatter is all about. Looking forward to chatting again. We hope you enjoyed listening and wherever you get your podcasts, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. For further resources, downloadable slides and more information on all the topics covered in our podcasts, visit changemakers.jcdeco.co.uk. You'll also find my short e-learning series there on how to speak the language of the CFO on the JCDeco Digital Academy. Thanks for joining and see you next time.